Um, this is just one example of uh, a recent client that I was um, donating. Oh, we just mentioned. I mean, like what David was saying, um, five most important things in your life. First thing, um, whether it's um, how, how that is translated to the architecture, I mean, that's very subjective. Uh, what is love? What is, I mean, how do you translate love that's just not physical to something physical? Then it goes into like things like you know, um, resale value. Yeah, that's very typical when they do that. Um, and photo opportunities, uh, nature feel kind of thing. I mean, they, they, they feed us in reading practice. They'll fill this up and they put it all in questions. Um, what we do then is our normal process is we'll send this question to them a couple of days in advance so that within themselves, you know, the couple can go through this in bed, you know, discuss it, fight over it, say whatever they want, type whatever they want. And then we call them in and actually sit, sit them down in the office. And the whole questionnaire will last about maybe three hours, two, three hours. During that time is when both of them have to commit or will commit to a certain thing. They will say that, okay, uh, I want a swimming pool. I want a swimming pool that's this long. I want a baby room. I want, a, I want two bedrooms. I want three bedrooms. I want my son and daughter to sleep next to each other, that kind of thing. Um, it's also those times when they start to fight. So why do you want a swimming pool for? Who's going to take care of it? That, that's, that's when the arguments happen. And um, that's where we walk out like. <laughs> so it goes, really, it goes from something very non-technical, non like what's the five things, the, the favorite things in life, um, what do you do on a Sunday morning, to things like, you know, um, you need a golf store, you need shoe rooms, how many pairs of shoes do you fit? Um, that's just a casual shoe that you have to wear, the wardrobe uh, uh, size. So it goes on to questions like, um, you want an elevator or not, you want a pet compound, whether it's a dog, it's a cat, it's a what? It goes very detail in uh, play area, gym area, no. It goes, it goes on. So that's that's what we do, and that's how we in a way measure our clients. Um, we can't take measurements of them physically, so we measure them in terms of an interview and a discussion. Um, these this questionnaire actually happens in the early stage of the project. We have not started design. We have not done anything. We have generally visited the site, and we move on with this kind of question. And the idea is that it also forces them, and also allows us to know who they are. It's, it's a kind of a, our way of getting to know you. I want to know who you are. I know what kind of things you do. I know what kind of things you like. I know what you do on the weekend. It's kind of scary in a way, but it's, it's how we dig out information about you guys. So they can actually eventually get very personal with us, um, where they start talking to us and start sending things, yeah, they are hobbies, they start to discuss it. And that's where I said, in a way, we're lucky. We've got to know so many different people in so many different lives. And uh, we've kind of like seen a lot of uh, people and how they live. And that's something that I think we're quite fortunate. OK, this is just some of the projects we've done. Um, we still do models. Uh, we do a lot of models. Uh, we've got an entire floor filled with models. And, and, and these are just some of them. Uh, now we're starting to show you some of the houses we have built. Uh, start with the first one. The first one, in fact, uh, is built when I was moonlighting as a lecturer come uh, architect in 2004, uh, whereby a colleague of mine at the time, uh, interestingly, an uh, Indian lady at the time, she's 46, and uh, not married. Uh, somehow, rather, she feel that she has some psychic ability. <laughs> so <coughs> she gathered one day uh, three families together, and then tell them that I had this dream for a month now to put all these families together into one house. They used to live in Commonwealth Village, but. Why don't you sell all your apartments? We go somewhere near the jungle and build one house, and therefore our family will prosper. So that was the mandate. So by the time they came to me, that was two weeks later. Then they said, David, can you help me build this house? I had a meeting with all my people last night. Uh, they were including herself, eight adults and two teenagers. 
We are prepared to move in this abandoned housing project near Nilai. Bear in mind, they are the urban people. Huh? So they want to go there. Nobody lives there at all. So they say, you must build this house for us. So we did that. Uh, we were very enthusiastic. We built, interestingly, two containers. One to, one to uh, ground floor is to, 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 to communicate with each other, which means that activities and all that. And the top is basically an almost an Iban longhouse, whereby uh, two single beds on each room. And in the minimum possible budget that we can master. And the model, we didn't even bother to do drawings. Because at that time, we feel that it's better to convince everybody with a model. So this model was built almost overnight. And the next morning, they came to us and said, OK, we all agree. Because everybody can read this is a two container. Must be very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, yes, yes, yes. But I forgot to tell you, it's actually a bit of cheaper. Timber on top can be quite expensive. So, anyway, he says, well, we have, still have another problem. Then I say, uh, so I say, what's the problem? They say, hey, we are very far away from everybody. So therefore, we need to build, we need to grow our own vegetable. So we have decided to put the house on one side. And so the half of the side is allowed for vegetable garden. But of course, as we're nearing completion of the project, we realize that the water table in Nila is extremely low. And it cost something like even about 10 years ago, about 40,000 ringgit to have the pump for the well. So we decided that we're going to boggle and now it becomes just a garden. But what was interesting about this house is because my friend at the time was making something like 30,000 a month. But let's say her brother is making 2,000 a month. They all give the money to a cousin who managed the household. Which in turn, they will get 500 ringgit back every month. Now, that is communal living for you. That's actually communism. Huh? <laughs> but having said that, that's also how our forefathers, when they first come to this country, live. Hundreds of years ago. All the money put into a central kitty. And in a way, we are fortunate enough to meet this bunch of crazy people who decided to go somewhere in the jungle and the land was extremely cheap at the time, I think 120,000 or something like that. The house was built at 600,000. Right? And some guys, uh, every morning, all the time, because they insist, in this particular house, was no, no, uh, no tender is made. Uh, he again, she's a psychic. She met this Chinese guy who was a furniture maker in Portison and said, I think you are the one who built my house. <laughs> so she would, he would take a motorbike every morning and go to this site at Pajang <coughs> and bring all his Chinese friends and carpenters to come and build this house, electricians and all that. So eventually this house was built. Now, what was interesting about this house is because it's a communal living originally without much budget. We actually decided that the first thing is very important that to make the house as high as possible, which is the, 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 the living area in this case. Yeah. And we have about 15 feet there, I think. Yeah, sorry. We have about 15 feet. I think we have half the money only, so this is half the money for the ceiling. This is the other side of the first floor. Right? So this is 13 and a half and this is 15 feet. And the idea is that if we don't have money at all, forget about the ground floor, we will, we will book all the furniture and all that so that if somebody come in and then steal the fridge away, go ahead. Right? So no need to have, uh, no need to have any sliding doors or anything because the basic of living actually is upstairs. This is sleeping. And in a way, the ground floor was done, it's almost like a mosque, whereby in the afternoon you can lie down, the wind just, 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 just move around and so forth. 
and it was basically done that way. And the floor is cement screen. And of course, somehow rather the house has a zero power. The moment the house nearing completion, suddenly somehow rather money comes in. Somebody want two of the three people who not used to work for a long time suddenly got work and then suddenly pay for the chair, pay for the flowers and so forth and the carpet and all that. So suddenly more and more funds are coming in, which is quite interesting in this area. And of course in the afternoon, uh, about five, six o'clock, they will sit down here. And then uh, because they are a group of painters, writers and all that and teachers, so they will recite poetry. Uh, they will get their friends to come and all that. Uh, in fact, because this, this site is scoping, so therefore uh, uh, this step is also act as a ventilation for the sub basement where you put your cars. Yeah, next. Next. And upstairs, uh, generally, is where the three apartments <coughs> and all that, they become each of these rooms become their house already. So at night, they will sit here to check and then they lock the gate on the first floor to check before they go to sleep. So this is how. So eventually, what we try to realize is the dream of living together, sharing everything together. So, uh, so that just by accident, uh, this thing is wood, for example, because that is a there's a, some sort of uh, analogy to the Ivan house. But nevertheless, the idea is that everybody sh share the same view and then do everything together. Next. Okay. Then we have another project, came around the same time. Uh, this project actually came to us. Uh, in this case, by a particular owner who happened to marry a very rich wife. <laughs> so, man, that's one way of getting rich. <laughs> so, uh, the wife happened to, of course, have a very wealthy father who in turn had bought each of uh, his four children a piece of land and then given each of them a million brigade. This is about Ten years ago again, uh, to build the house. This guy is an engineer with Maxis, interestingly, and probably had his dream all the time want to be a builder. Decided to quit his job because of his wealthy wife, of course, <laughs> and then hired nine Indonesian and then built his house. Quit his job, yeah, by the way, and built this house for four and a half years, brick by brick. Now, that's dedication. Uh, well, I can see some men <laughs> keep on smiling. Maybe they had the same opportunity, but this happened. <laughs> so, and, 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 and the site is actually, uh, this place is of all places like the Pope. So when we went to this place, interestingly, all the neighbors, in this case, the other three siblings already built the houses. And we realized that all the houses that they built, their fences, they all have barbed wire. Now, when you go to a place, you see barbed wire on the fence. You are worried, right? So, first thing we worried about is security. And according to one of the siblings, is that they were, they were broken in three times. That particular year. So we decided that we could just build a prison. <laughs> right? But then this guy say, hey, I don't quit my job, you build me a prison, how can? So I built this house so that I want to show how fantastic I am a builder to my father-in-law. Huh? Because the father-in-law also happened to be a developer. But more importantly, I want to put all these family together. Because he, at that time, they had three very active teams, teenagers. So therefore, uh, the house was done in such a way that we want to wrap around the site, <coughs> wrap around the site, and then we make sure that the house is as open as possible. Okay. 
So eventually, this is out. Now, because they happen to have the biggest budget, and this happened to be where this is their house, together with this particular floor, and then there's another entrance at the back, and this top part is supposed to be for the father-in-law, because I think he's very grateful for the father-in-law, giving him the money and the land. But unfortunately, because it takes four and a half years, the mother-in-law passed away during the construction. So that's unfortunate. And now, that particular house, uh, this top part is not being used so much. It becomes a guest wing. The reason for that is because the father-in-law actually have another young girlfriend. So obviously not very suitable to live together with the daughter uh, when they are about the same age. <laughs> <coughs> so, this, this becomes the house. Now, what was interesting about it is because this guy, the client has no idea how to start to build. So therefore, luckily this place happened to be about 20 minutes from my office. So literally every second day, is we will provide sketches. We have a thick notebook, which we will have that. It's almost like a storyline. We will actually draw part by part, and we will draw it in 3D. And sometimes we draw on the floor, on the wall or whatever. Why? Because the Indonesian workers were finding it a bit difficult to understand. So literally some of these walls, for example, are about 15 inches thick. Because that is the kind of stones or the or the or the, that, the size that they have got. And that becomes the wall. So this house is extremely cooling, by the way. So the house is done in such a way that in the end, inside has to be extremely open. Uh, this is a good example whereby uh, there is no sections or whatever. We have the model done. And then we decided to have everything in same color so that at least it has some sort of order. And then we have an elongated courtyard to allow the wind to go across. And this house is double layer, as you can see. The idea behind it is that inside, uh, it looks very open because the wife, by the way, or the mother, uh, in this case, my client's wife, she's a screamer. She likes to scream from one room to another room, tell the kids to come and eat your lunch or whatever. So one of the conditions is that she doesn't want a microphone she wanted to scream and then and the kids at the bedroom got to come down in three seconds. <laughs> that is the condition. So therefore is 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 visually open, multiple visual. In fact, it's so open that this house becomes so popular with production house. Uh, a Hollywood production, I think the star by Naomi Watts or something, came here and do the show. And do, do, a, do a, <coughs> a shooting because this house is incredibly suitable for multi angle camera without having cranes and all that. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and it's open, uh, extremely open like that. And I think they make something like 30 40,000 a year over the last few years. So the house are actually very cocoon like from outside and inside is extremely open. Yeah, this is the, the, the anger at night. And it looks very heavy and the idea behind it is that so that you feel very uh, you don't feel like going in. Right? Now but I just go back to this now that now. the idea of this house also in the end is this. For the outsider, the feeling is that I don't feel like going in. But for the insider, boy, am I glad I'm inside. So that, that, that is the, 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 the message we would like to uh, put across. Next. <coughs> this house, RIP, stands for what? Rest in peace. Why rest in peace? Uh, when the house is finished, 
the owner said, I can die in this house. Uh, I conducted this interview with a reporter actually on paper. And uh, when he came to us, this is the kind of owner typically we have. Typically we have, they are on one loan of four. And when you have a client on bundle number four, which means that they have probably gone through everything that whatever you can give them. But what they haven't lived before is a stopping site. So before this particular owner came to us, he thought they had this. I think at that time it's 3 p.m. I still remember on Friday. So very urgently, I got this call from somebody who is a friend of this couple and said, hey, you must come to this site. I have this client waiting because before you think that this can be done, he won't buy the land. So we happened to be 10 minutes from our office. We drove over and we realized that only about 10 feet is flat land. The rest is actually so flat. And by the way, this particular land is about 34 and a half degrees, which means that it's a half.